Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing really well. Today I'm gonna to be sharing with you the introduction for my third round of the Graveyard Project Pan. This is a collaborative project pan that was started by my friend Emily. Her channel is Emily and Max, and if you're not familiar with her yet, I highly recommend that you go and check out Emily's channel. She just comes up with the most amazing project panning concepts like this year she came up with the deck of panning and in years past she came up with this project called the graveyard project pan and i am so happy to be doing this project again i had such a blast with it in 2019 and in 2020 and of course when i saw that she was going to be doing this project again i could not resist i was probably honestly going to do it myself anyways if if it wasn't going to be a community theme or community thing rather because it just is so much fun for me i feel like this project was really, really successful for me last year. And in part that is because it runs for six months. So it's starting today on April 30th and it goes all the way until Halloween day, which is October 31st. And so having a substantial amount of time I think is really good, but there are also updates every other month. And I just feel like for me personally, that has proven to be something really beneficial because that way I can really see progress between updates and like really check in with myself after two months of use. So that is something that I really enjoy about this project pan. I also enjoy that it is a rolling style project pan that has two different category prompts so that we can kind of pick our products based on those prompts. So the first one is the resurrection category and the resurrection category is for products that were previously in project pans. So items that are in the makeup graveyard, things that you almost reached your goal on or maybe you did reach your goal on but now you want to try to finish it up and I just absolutely love that because it brings those products back to the forefront and then the other category is the collecting cobwebs category where we get to pick out things that have been neglected and underutilized things that kind of made their way to the back of your drawer and just haven't been reached for in a while and you kind of just want to bring them back up to a priority and I just I love this project for that very reason because it makes me really think more critically about my products and just really makes me want to reach for things that are getting older and neglected in my collection. And this is a collaborative project pan so I will leave all of the kind of necessary information down in the description box of this video as well as the hashtag here on the screen because I believe it's changing for this year. So I'll leave that in on the screen as well as all of the information for the playlist and any other information that you need down in the description box. This is a rolling style project pan, so you can focus on, I think anywhere between five and 10 products, but for the most part, I do see a lot of people choose six products, which is what I'm doing for myself as well, because that kind of is a bit more of a spooky kind of number, and it just goes alongside the Halloween theme just so perfectly. So yeah, I think that's all I have to say for this introduction. I am so, so excited to share with you all the products I'm going to be working on. So why don't we just get right on into that? So let's kick it off with the collecting cobwebs category. And these are the products that are getting a little bit older in my collection, things that I need to kind of bring back to the forefront. And this first item is one that I definitely need to prioritize for the very immediate future, for the very beginning of this project. This is the Derma E Sun Protection Mineral Powder SPF 30. It is a SPF powder that has this brush applicator and the reason why I really need to prioritize this is because its expiry date is actually this July so it says 07 2021 is the expiry and I haven't used very much of this whatsoever because I just don't entirely understand this product so if I turn it upside down you can see there's a little bit of usage out of there but really not that much and I genuinely do not know how far down this goes but in any case I have not used this very much at all and yeah it's gonna expire by July now I don't particularly think that using a setting powder exclusively as your sun protection is really gonna be of any sort of benefit but as we're going into the warmer months I'm gonna be spending more time out in the Sun this will be really great to kind of like touch up my SPF but actually in recent weeks as I was kind of getting to this point of trying to pull all my products for this project I've been using this as a dry shampoo which I know sounds weird but it's actually really good as a dry shampoo because this brush applicator allows me to kind of like shake it onto my scalp and kind of like push it into like my hairline here and gives me a little bit of protection. Oh, there was a hair stuck there. <laughs> it gives me a little bit of protection and it also just absorbs some of the oil on my scalp and it's actually been really good for that. So I can use this um, as a touch up powder throughout the day or as a dry shampoo throughout the day and I don't believe I'll be able to finish it by that expiry date but 
I can even just use it as a dry shampoo and as a setting powder after the expiry because I really don't need this for the sun protection factor of it. But yes, I want to work my way through this hopefully throughout this summer. Honestly, I'm so bad with loose powders. I'm really, really bad at getting good use out of them, but I'm going to try my best to use that up seeing as the expiry date is very near. This next product is one that is not super old, but it is something that I've just been generally forgetting to reach for. It is my Becca Glow Gloss in the shade Opal. I've had this for just over a year now, maybe closer to a year and a half, and I really enjoyed this when I first brought it into my collection. I wore it very, very often. I always had it in my makeup bag, but nowadays I don't have anything in my makeup bag because I don't go anywhere. So it's something that kind of just went into my drawers and I forgot about it. I like legitimately forgot that I had this in my collection and it's a beautiful, beautiful beigey, light, light pink kind of color. These are just my absolute favorite sort of gloss and just nude colors for me personally. And it has this minty, cooly, cooly, <laughs> minty, cooling kind of sensation that I really enjoy. It offers a beautiful glow on the lips and it's something that I feel like I can wear so often yet I forget about it. So I don't want to finish it up in the next six months. I just don't really think that that's feasible for me, but I'd like to see some progress on this because right now it basically looks completely opaque. It looks almost totally full. And after having it for as long as I have had it, I don't want that to be the case. I want it to look loved and used. So I just like to start seeing some kind of space between the product and the tube not necessarily trying to make any specific amount of progress, but I just want to see that momentum being made throughout this project pan. And I mean, I might decide after a couple months that I've used it enough, maybe roll something else in its place. But for now, I just kind of want to bring it to the forefront and start um, really loving on it, you know? And then the final Collecting Cobwebs product was kind of hard for me to decide to put into this project because I am also working on my Pan Those Eyeshadows Project Pan, and it's entirely likely I could pull this into that, but I haven't yet, ever. It is my Juvia's Place The Masquerade Mini Palette. I've had this palette since 2018, and I've never once rolled this into my Pan Those Eyeshadows, which is shocking, because there are 16 shades in here, so I would imagine that this palette could pretty easily be rolled into that project. That's quite a big number of pans of eyeshadow. And as you can see, I've not hit pan on any of these. It's not really a palette that I've ever really priorita prioritized. However, like there are some serious dips in here, like pretty good progress on this considering it's never been in a project pan, but I just want to love on it more than I have previously, especially because I'm always working on eyeshadows in my Pan Those Eyeshadows project, and this is getting older. This is now approaching the three year mark that I've had this in my collection and I don't see any pans. And yeah, I just, I just want to bring it back to my priority. Mm, this is tough. <laughs> I should have really uh, thought this through a little bit more, but I think I'll set myself a usage goal with it because that way I don't necessarily try to hit pan on one particular shade. And if it was to get rolled into my pan, those eyeshadows, then I would just kind of use it in tandem with whichever one was the focus shade. So I think what I'm going to do is set myself a goal of reaching into this palette 25 times. I think that's totally doable. There's some beautiful, easy to wear neutrals down here, especially these gorgeous warm tones, which is just like my vibe. And then some beautiful, bright, colorful shades. And yeah, I just think that this is something that I haven't really used to its full potential. And I do think this is a really great formula and just a beautiful palette. But because of the way that I do choose to pan eyeshadows for the most part, this just has always been overlooked. So I want to just bring it back to the forefront. And I'm really excited to play with this more frequently and just play around with this and get to know it again because formulas do change over time. And I've had this for three years now and I don't believe that I've reached for it in the last year. And so it may have changed. I don't know. I really don't know but I'm looking forward to falling back in love with this. So my next three products fall into the resurrection category, which is the category where we pull products from previous project pans 
and we either try to hit a new goal or try to hit the original goal that we had with them. So the first item I have here, I've actually previously had in two separate project pans, I believe. It was in my Mission 100% Cruelty Free project pan that I did for a handful of months a couple years back. And then it was also in my 20 favorites in 2020 project pan last year. This is the Wet n Wild Mega Glow Highlighting Powder in the shade Precious Petals. It is a beautiful, beautiful, pink highlighter and yeah, it's been in two previous project pans. I think with both of those, my goal was to use it up. I still have yet to do that because highlighter takes a long, long time to use up. There isn't a ton left in here. However, like I said, it takes a long time to use up highlighter. So I wanted to roll it into this project here nice and early so that I can give myself possibly the next six months to actually get this used up and out of my collection. As you can see, there's some really great pan on here. Really, really great pan. Barely any product, and yet, I actually think this might be quite a challenge for me because I've not been really liking the intense highlighters that I used to like in the past, and this is intense. So I'm gonna be using this very, very light-handed, possibly as more of like an inner corner highlight, more so on my collarbones and shoulders than actually on my cheeks. And so who knows? I really don't know what to expect with the life of this product in the rest of this project, but I'm gonna to continue to uh, try to get it used up. I have dedicated so much time and energy to this highlighter in the past and I've enjoyed it. I really, really have enjoyed it. This just generally isn't a brand that I want to support anymore. I just feel like they have kind of been a little bit sneaky in their business practices in the past and I just, I just don't vibe with them anymore. So I wanna get this used up. I wanna enjoy it while I have it. But yes, I'm really looking forward to hopefully getting this used up over this summer. I don't even wanna have it going into the fall, but who knows, we'll see what happens with this one. And then this next product is one that's actually a resurrection from this project last year. And I had it in a previous project pan prior to that. So it's been in two different projects as well. This is a just a mini of the Becca Sunlit Bronzer in the shade Bronze Bondi. It was from a Sephora 500 point perk that had a ton of Becca products and I did hit pan on it last year in this project pan and previous to that, my goal was to hit pan on it and I hadn't done it in the previous project pan I had it in, which I think was my nine in 2019 project pan, I think so. Really hard to keep track. I've been panning for quite some time now, but my goal with this now is gonna to be to try to use it up because I have already hit pan on it and I have really thoroughly, completely enjoyed using this bronzer. It has this beautiful, like slight sheen, but I wouldn't call it a shimmer. It's like a beautiful satin that just sits so effortlessly on the skin. And I love using this as an eyeshadow as well. And this doesn't contain much product. It originally contained 1.7 grams. And I've already hit pan on it and used it like a shit ton. I did already have on a bronzer and then I ended up kind of putting this on top today. And I think it just looks so effortless. It just blends into the skin so perfectly. And I really do enjoy it. So I don't see it being an issue whatsoever trying to get use out of this over this summer. And I'd love, love, love to have a bronzer out of my collection by the end of this project. And then the final product is one that is a resurrection from this project from 2019 and from 2020. It has been in both rounds of this project. It is my, say with me, Milani Luminoso blush because this is the oldest blush in my freaking collection. And I had it in this project in 2019 with the goal of hitting pan on it, didn't hit pan on it. Then I rolled it into this project in 2020 and right at the tail end of the project, I did hit pan on it. And now I wanna finish it up. I don't know how realistic that is because I have barely used it since I had it in this project back in October. So I haven't made a ton of progress on it. I am wearing it today. It just offers this beautiful, like peachy coral sheen to the cheeks that it just looks so sun kissed and so effortless and so perfect. But there's a lot of products still in here, like a lot. And I know with the amount of times that I have used this, just in these projects alone, how slowly this product might go for me, but I'm gonna try. I'm really, really gonna try to finish it up. And if I don't get it finished, which I probably won't, 
I'll be pretty dang close and maybe I'll have it done at the end of 2021. So I am really looking forward to investing some more time into this. This color is absolutely perfect for me in the summertime. And so it just feels like it fits this project either way. But I cannot have this in this project in 2022. I just can't. We can't get it to that point. I got to get it used up sooner than later. It's my oldest makeup product in my entire collection. This will feel like such a big accomplishment when I do get this done. And I will. I will one day. But that is going to be everything that I'm focusing on for this project pan. All six products I'm really looking forward to integrating more frequently into my routine and getting to know them again and hopefully getting to use up a couple of them as well. So yeah, let me know if you're going to be participating in this project pan as well. Definitely go check out the playlist and the hashtag over on Instagram. That's going to be everything though for today's video. Thank you so, so much for watching and for hanging out with me and I'll see you in the next one. Bye everyone.